The Chicago Bears are going to need more from DeAndre Swift than he showed with the Philadelphia Eagles in order for Ryan Poles to really get his money's worth from the free agent running back. You are Locked On Bears, your daily Chicago Bears podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Bears, and I'm your host, Lauren Cox. I'm here to bring you your daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. You can follow me on Twitter at CoxSports1, and you can follow the podcast at Locked On Bears on all of your favorite social media platforms, including the Locked On Bears YouTube channel, where you can keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. Thanks for making Locked On Bears your first listen today. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. On the show today, we will talk to the host of Locked On Eagles here on the Locked On Podcast Network, well, one of the two hosts, Louis DiBiase, about what we saw from DeAndre Swift this past season in Philadelphia. We'll learn how the Eagles used him, what he did well, what the Eagles could have done to get more out of him, and what we should then expect for him in this Chicago Bears backfield. We'll jump from there to kind of compare and contrast What we've seen from other recent Philadelphia Eagles running backs that had the same kind of success Swift did in Philadelphia and then left Philadelphia and maybe didn't have the same kind of situation. And we'll take a closer look at DeAndre Swift's contract and compare it to some of the other big name running backs that signed to get a sense of what kind of value the Bears did or didn't get in the free agent running back market. But I want to start with our Locked On Eagles local expert here to really get to know DeAndre Swift better from someone who watched... Every snap, every handoff, every catch, every play last season. Joining us now on Locked On Bears is Louis DiBiase, host of Locked On Eagles here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Louis, a couple of former Philadelphia Eagles coming to Chicago this offseason, but I want to focus in on DeAndre Swift. I know it was just one year in Philly, but how would you sort of evaluate the year he had? Yeah, I thought DeAndre Swift was good. Not great. I think the Eagles didn't tap into some of his potential, especially in the receiving game. I think that could be something that there's a higher ceiling for in Chicago with Caleb Williams in a new offense. But I think DeAndre Swift was a better, he was an upgrade over what Miles Sanders was in 2022, over a thousand yards, showed explosiveness. He was a weapon down the field as well. Some clutchness in the fourth quarter, had over a thousand yards, as I mentioned. But I will say, I think there were. Some moments where there was meat left on the bones. The Eagles had one of the best offensive lines in football last year, and I think if the hole wasn't wide open, DeAndre Swift sometimes struggled to get yards above what was expected of him. He only did have those two 100-yard games early in the year. But overall, I thought Swift was a good player, and I think he could be even better in Chicago. I think Brian Johnson, the Eagles' former offensive coordinator, just did not really use him in a very creative way. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. You mentioned the... Could have used him more as a receiver, as a career yeah. high receiving yards, career low receiving yards. Like why, why was he able to be so productive in the ground game, but then they couldn't find other ways to get yeah. more productive out of him? Honestly, I was as confused as anybody because in the summer, there were a lot of headlines like DeAndre Swift is one of not just the best players overall in this roster when it comes to explosiveness, you know, in the middle of the field as a running back, but just his overall natural hands like he they were saying he caught the football like a receiver in training camp. So that was an area that Miles Sanders outside of his rookie year in 2019 really wasn't able to help the Eagles with. It's why Kenneth Gainwell had such a big role in two minute drills and on third down with DeAndre Swift. We thought, okay, here's a do it all weapon that you can play on all three downs. And then the Eagles just really didn't use him in that way. I think Jalen Hurts at times hasn't really gotten a running back involved in the passing game. But Lauren, I think it would also just was a lack of creativity. You didn't see a lot of, you know, trying to get him mismatched with a linebacker. The Eagles were the worst team in the league when it comes to utilizing pre-snap motion so they didn't really use him in the backfield and get him in the slot on a slower linebacker or safety it was really just check downs or bust so I think it was just a lack of creativity utilizing that ability in the middle of the field and down the sidelines so the Eagles make some coaching staff changes and a new offensive player comes in so why not run it back with with DeAndre Swift why not try and keep him for longer I mean I know his contract was coming up but why Mm -hmm. why let him walk and then go out and sign Saquon Barkley to such a big deal 
Yeah, I think Howie Roseman was looking at a way to just kind of stand above the, you know, he says all the time he wants to zig when the rest of the league zags. And I think he saw a market inefficiency at running back where sure, he could have got DeAndre Swift back at a cheaper price, but he probably said I can get an even better receiving weapon and overall better talent. Saquon Barkley for not much more money, like $12 million for a running back is a lot for three years. Howie Roseman normally does not pay running backs multi-year contract extensions. But when you look at compared to other positions, like what Gabriel Davis got in Jacksonville or Darnell Mooney in Atlanta, I think he just realized he could get a top tier talent. Saquon Barkley, there's only probably one or two other running backs that are as complete as him when it comes to his overall skill set. He thought he could get that kind of talent for a cheap price because the entire league is kind of in agreement about what to do at running back. So I don't think it had anything. It wasn't really a referendum on DeAndre Swift. I think it was just an opportunity to get a stud in Saquon Barkley and try to match what San Francisco has done with Christian McCaffrey. You touched on this a little bit earlier, but when it comes to the, the rushing success of Swift yeah. this past season, how, how much of that do you put on the Eagles having a consistently good offensive line for years and years versus Swift being able to create bigger plays for himself beyond what the blocking allowed? Yeah, I think the first half of the year, you look at the Minnesota game, the Tampa Bay game, week two and three, Chicago fans, those are the games to go look at what DeAndre Swift can be when it comes to his overall potential. Like he was creative. He he can cut on a dime. He's extremely fast. He's to me a better overall athlete than Miles Sanders. So when it comes to creating and getting yards above expected, that's not something DeAndre Swift just doesn't have in his arsenal, right? He's not a plotting running back like, you know, a guy that the Eagles and Bears both had, a Jordan Howard back in the day. That's not his kind of talent. But I will say in the second half of the year, he struggled to break tackles. I don't think, I think his vision struggled at times because this run game, the offensive line was opening holes. So I think it was an inconsistent year, but again, DeAndre Swift, He's not going to be, I think he's a very good featured back in a committee like approach, but I don't think at the same time, realistically, he's Christian McCaffrey or Saquon Barkley. I think you know what you're getting with Swift. Where would you rate him in terms of like the spectrum of running backs when it comes to speed, right? Like yeah. obviously he's not a slow back, but maybe not the fastest back in the NFL. Like, And how do you sort of characterize long speed versus short area quickness with Swift? I think he has very good short area explosiveness. His long range speed, I don't think it's bad. I think it would be second tier. Um, when you do look at his receiving ability, again, explosiveness and speed is a big part of why he should be a much better receiver in Chicago than he was in Philadelphia. So that is something you're getting. Like Again, DeAndre Swift isn't somebody that last year was physical, broke a lot of tackles. Much of the red zone inefficiency was a lot because the Eagles were just using the brotherly shove with Jalen Hurts. But in the red zone, like he's not going to be that featured workhorse guy like within five yards. They honestly even used Kenneth Gainwell more in that area. But speed is something you're absolutely getting. And he also, as I mentioned with his receiving ability, he has very natural hands, not just for a running back, but just overall as an offensive playmaker. So that's one thing you're going to get. I think you're going to get chunk yardage, big plays in 2024 with the Bears. How, how about pass protection i mean i know that's something that's hard to like characterize but like yeah he's back there next to jalen hurts is it like we're scared of who he has to block or is it like no it should be pretty fine or like no he's actually really great there like where where would you kind yeah. of categorize him yeah that's a good question i actually think that's a part of why the eagles wanted to bring in saquon barkley saquon barkley is a very good run blocking or i should say pass blocking running back deandre swift he wasn't terrible in that way i don't think they said we cannot have this guy out here for obvious passing downs where he has to protect jalen hurts but it was definitely inconsistent. I think they actually trusted Kenneth Gainwell more in this area. The Eagles really did struggle to stop the blitz last year, not putting that on DeAndre Swift or any running back. But yeah, I think, again, he's DeAndre Swift isn't somebody you're signing to be that you know every down pass blocker that's, again, going to get those really tough yards. But if you use him in the right way, he can be a very dynamic weapon for your offense in an approach where you have two solid guys in a rotation. That's the thing is, I think the Eagles put too much on his plate last year because Kenneth Gainwell was just so underwhelming. They really needed Swift. Well, the Bears are looking forward to what he's going to be able to provide them in the backfield. Louie, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, Lauren. This episode of Locked on Bears is brought to you by our friends at BetterHelp. BetterHelp provides online therapy that can be super beneficial for your mental health. Online therapy is a really important part of my own personal mental health rec regimen, and I cannot recommend BetterHelp enough. I like to treat my mental health a lot like my physical health. I go to the gym to take care of my body. I go to therapy 
to take care of my brain. Not because my body is broken, not because my brain is broken, but because I want both of them to be as strong and healthy as possible. And therapy is a great way to work through the difficult things that we just can't always handle purely on our own. So if you've been thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's flexible, convenient, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire, and then they'll match you with a licensed therapist. And if that therapist just isn't the right match for you, that's okay. You can change therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. So DeAndre Swift had a good season from the Philadelphia Eagles, and our thanks to Louis DiBiase for helping us break that down. But it, it felt like there was some meat on the bone still there. And it felt like there was more the Eagles could have done and there was more DeAndre Swift could have done. And I can't help but feel like the Bears are going to need more from DeAndre Swift in order to really make this three-year, $24 million contract really feel like a really good, sound investment from the Chicago Bears. We reacted to the trade right away when it first happened. We talked about how, okay, maybe running back's not the ideal use of that salary cap space. And I want to go into the specifics of DeAndre Swift's contract here in, in just a little bit. But if that running back can really play well and play up to the level of that contract, then it can become worth it. And it's kind of a question of, you know, h- how you reach that level and what that level looks like and how you sort of evaluate production versus, you know, the the price that you're paying for it. Because certainly right now in terms of per year average, DeAndre Swift is in the top 10 among running backs. I think he's, I'm trying to count quick. I think he's like eight or ninth. He's tied with D- Derek Henry in terms of the per year average on the contract he got this season. So like, doesn't mean that DeAndre Swift has to be Derek Henry exactly, but you'd like to see a Derek Henry level impact from DeAndre Swift. And you look at the box scores from last season, 1,050 yards, five touchdowns, another couple hundred yards in the passing game. Like that can be a major high impact running back in the Chicago Bears offense. But like Louis was saying, you want to get him even more involved in the passing game than what the Eagles were able to do. And honestly, like I want to see DeAndre Swift be able to squeeze more out of what the Chicago Bears offensive line gives him and what the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line gives gave him because as we saw him go from a, a rotational player in Detroit the first couple of seasons to being the lead back in Philadelphia this past season, his yards per carry did go down a little bit. He was a little bit less efficient as you increase the volume. And I think his missed tackle numbers were fairly steady, but didn't necessarily take that sort of leap forward that you would have wanted to see like, okay, you go from from being a guy who's pretty good at it and then remained a guy who's pretty good at it, which is which is fine, but now you're getting the $8 million a year contract. Now you're not the the rookie running back contract anymore. You're a guy that's going to be relied upon to be that true lead back in this Bears offense, knowing that you know, you've know you got Roshan Johnson and Khalil Herbert that can be part of the rotation there. But you're paying Swift like a guy who's going to be a top 10 running back in the NFL this season. And as, as impressive as 1,000 yards and another couple hundred receiving yards is, I don't think of that as uh, in a vacuum – a top 10 NFL running back. You know what I mean? Like that you need to be a difference maker, a game changer. And I want to see more of that. And we have this kind of, I don't want to call it a red flag is, is too strong of a word, but there's kind of this hovering elephant in the room here with DeAndre Swift leaving the Eagles with what happened last season with Miles Sanders leaving the Eagles, where Miles Sanders in the last year of his rookie contract, year four for them, he had his best season, much like DeAndre Swift. Went from being a, you know, a, a seven, eight hundred yard guy to being, you know, starting all seventeen games or, or playing in all seventeen games, starting fifteen, and having twelve hundred yards and eleven touchdowns and really being that big lead back. Signs with the Carolina Panthers in free agency, has a very down year. Now, obviously, the Carolina Panthers as a whole had a very down year, and that was not an offense where anyone was having any kind of success. So I don't think the jury is out on Miles Sanders still being good, but there's this feeling of like, okay, he was really good in a really good Eagles offense, and you take him out of the infrastructure of a really productive Eagles offense, and he's not as good when 
he's not getting all that help from the offensive line and from Jalen Hurts being a rushing threat and from the passing game being such a threat. But when all the attention was on Miles Sanders in Carolina's backfield, he wasn't able to be as productive. And there's a fear that you take DeAndre Swift out of the Eagles infrastructure and he's not going to be able to be as productive. Now, the Bears have a much better infrastructure that he's coming into than what Miles Sanders went into Carolina. And Miles Sanders and DeAndre Swift are two totally different running backs. But there is this idea of like, okay, how much is the running back and how much is the supporting cast? And in Philadelphia, the supporting cast has allowed multiple running backs to come in there and have big individually productive seasons. And now both of those running backs have moved on and we'll see how those running backs are able to do outside of that comfort and safety of what we see from the Philadelphia Eagles offense. And so the Bears should have the infrastructure to do so, but we need to see Miles Sanders like not only match what he did in Philadelphia in Chicago, but in order to be worth $8 million a year on that contract, be even better than what he did in Philadelphia in not the same system and not the same infrastructure. And maybe with Shane Waldron at the helm, he'll use DeAndre Swift even better and he can be more productive. We'll see how the offensive lines end up comparing. We'll kind of see if the Bears leave it like this with Braxton Jones, Tevin Jenkins, uh, Sheldon Coleman, uh, Nate Davis and Darnell Dar Dar Wright, if that's going to be the offensive line, if there's more changes there, if Caleb Williams in the passing game are more dynamic to then make DeAndre Swift's job easier, maybe it will turn out to be a, a fine signing for the Chicago Bears. But that's where, that's where you start to like look around and say, okay, you're taking that big step up in money. Let's see that production at the very least continue, if not take some kind of step forward. Like you signed DeAndre Swift so that the Bears can have a great rushing attack to make life easier on Caleb Williams to help a rookie quarterback be able to rely on that back in the backfield when you also then have Khalil Herbert and, and Roshan Johnson, because that's also kind of the measuring stick that he's going to be held to. Not only are we going to say, OK, DeAndre Swift has to be as good and better than what he did in Philadelphia, but it's also got to compare to what the Bears had last year in this backfield as a combination. Like he needs to be a clear upgrade over the Bears rushing attack last year. And obviously, Justin Fields was the Bears' leading rusher last season. He's out of the picture. So we're not measuring, like, the Bears' total team rushing yards here. The Bears, as a team, were second in the NFL in rushing yards. You're going to lose something by not having Justin Fields. And obviously, if DeAndre Swift is getting the lion's share of the carry, or let's say, let's say the Bears' share of the carry, so we don't have to use that expression for an NFC North team, then Khalil Herbert's going to see the ball less and have fewer yards. And Roshan Johnson, I mean, it was a rotation for him last year, so we'll see what the, what the snaps look like. But, like, Last year, Khalil Herbert had 600 yards. Deontay Foreman had 400 yards. Roshan Johnson had 350 yards. Like, they were able to combine for, even without Justin Fields' stats in there as a rushing attack, running backs in this Bears offense, not including Darrington Evans, who had 100 yards too. But that's, quick message, 1,400 yards from Bears backs last season. I mean, again, you, you can't, can't compare, like, okay, Swift has to beat th be equal to three running backs production. But, like, that's what the Bears were able to get last season without DeAndre Swift. So DeAndre Swift needs to come in and add to that on top of that and make this Bears backfield that much better. And when you were already the number two rushing team, but again, okay, with Justin Fields, maybe not, well, can't have the same expectations exactly. You still need him to come in and be really, really good and lift this Bears backfield to a high level. And it's going to be a high expectations for him when you get a contract like that. Like that's ultimately what it starts to come down to here is like, you've got to be above and beyond what the Bears already had when you're going to pay a running back. Like, and typically in free agency or in trades, only the Christian McCaffrey's of the world, the Derrick Henry's of the world and the, the Saquon Barkley's of the world have been able to be truly worth that. And most of the time, most of the other times that teams pay running backs, they tend to underwhelm and not quite live up to that billing and not quite end up being the type of difference maker that the team hoped they would be. We'll be rooting for DeAndre Swift to do so. But I, but even even then, like when we talk about the Barclays and the, the, the Derrick Henrys, like the contract DeAndre Swift got isn't crazy far from the contracts those guys got. So I, I want to look more closely at like where DeAndre Swift's money compares to the other running backs in free agency and why it feels more like the Bears overpaid, especially compared to Tony Pollard. That's the one that's really sticking with me, but obviously got less than Barkley and less than some of these other guys. But when you start to look at how the guaranteed money is structured and how the actual contract cap hit for the Chicago Bears is structured, 
he's a lot closer to some of these other big name running backs than you might have thought. And so the production will need to match. We'll, we'll, we'll go in depth on the comparison there next on Locked On Bears. This episode of Locked On Bears is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Is your bracket, is your bracket busted already? Don't worry about it because FanDuel will let you keep betting on all of every game of the tournament, no matter how good or bad your bracket looks. So whether you're betting on more big upsets or riding a number one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. So you bet $5 on anything. It doesn't have to be March Madness. It could be NFL draft prop bet or baseball season or anything. $5 bet. If your bet wins, not only do you get the winnings for your $5 bet, it could be the biggest favorite in all of the sports betting that day. You get those winnings for that $5 bet, plus FanDuel adds an extra $200 in bonus bets in your account that you can use on anything. Point spreads, money lines, you can even pick who's going to win it all. So to get your $200 in bonus bets, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops till they cut down the nets. The Chicago Bears were quick to the market with DeAndre Swift. He was one of the first running backs signed, if not the first running back signed. I don't have the exact timeline there, but he certainly he signed before Saquon Barkley. He signed before Josh Jacobs. He signed before, well before Derrick Henry. I believe he signed before Tony Pollard and a lot of the other running backs that ended up hitting the market this season. And with that, there's an advantage for Ryan Poles can make sure he goes out and gets his guy. If he really believes in DeAndre Swift, then he doesn't have to wait and see what other contracts those guys are going to get. And then, okay, if somebody else gets a big contract, Swift will say, well, I want a contract at least as big as that, if not bigger than that. And then all of a sudden you have to end up paying him more. But if you get there first, you know, you just have to give him an offer he's okay with and accepts. And that's where, you know, that's where you can run into trouble if you overshoot it a little bit and misread the market, or you can really be smart by getting the first to the market and getting a discount on guy that, that maybe if he had waited longer would have gotten more money. And so when you look at Deandre Swift's contract, like obviously you see three years, $24 million. I think it's like 15 some odd dollars, million, 16 guaranteed. I think it's 16 guaranteed. Okay. The bears can afford that. The bears were in a position to afford that. It didn't preclude them from signing other players they liked or trading for Keenan Allen, for example. But you start to look at some of the other running back contracts that were signed and the way they were structured because three three years, $24 million does not just mean you get $8 million the first year, $8 million the second year, and $8 million the third year, and that's your three-year $24 million contract. There's a lot more creative structuring in how those contracts come together. And other teams did creative contract structuring in other contracts that were even bigger than what DeAndre Swift got. And you start to compare them a little bit and it, you can't equate or say like, okay, this contract is better than that contract because they're not the same players. But when you look dollars to dollars next to each other, you can kind of see like, you, you can evaluate for yourself whether or not the Bears made the right deal here with DeAndre Swift. So this year, 2024, DeAndre Swift will cost the Bears $5.8 million against the salary cap. Next year, it'll cost them $9.3 million against the salary cap. And both of those years are more or less fully guaranteed. And then year three, it's about $8 million left on that. And that's not guaranteed at all. So the Bears could cut him after year two and only pay about a million dollars in dead money and save, you know, seven or $8 million against the cap before year three. So it's a two year deal, six in the first year, nine in the second year. You compare that to, okay, uh, Saquon Barkley got the really big contract of the running back group, three years worth $37.75 million. They structured it so year one, he's only costing them $4 million. So this, the Eagles will pay Saquon Barkley less this year than the Bears will pay DeAndre Swift this year. Now, next year, that jumps up quite a bit. They've backloaded Saquon Barkley's contract. Next year, it'll cost them $13.5 million. But over the first two years of Saquon Barkley's contract, they're going to pay him $17.5 million. Over the first two years of DeAndre Swift's contract, the Bears are going to pay him about $16 million. So over the first two years of the contract, Barkley's only getting one more million dollars from the Eagles than what DeAndre Swift is getting from the Chicago Bears. Really almost about the same price. And then year three, 
his number's pretty high, and if they wanted to cut him after two years, they would have some dead money. So they're more or less locked into him for three years instead of two. But over the first two years of that contract, pretty cheap, I mean, pretty affordable compared to DeAndre Swift, who I don't think anyone's going to come here and argue that Swift is better than Barkley. You might prefer Swift at this price to Barkley at that total price. But like for the first two years, it's about the same. Year three is a little bit more, and you're going to pay a little bit more for Barkley at that point. But you're paying for, in theory, a, a, a better running back. And that's why Barkley gets more than that. Or you compare it to Josh Jacobs. Like Josh Jacobs is getting a little less this year, a little bit more. Next year, Josh Jacobs from the Green Bay Packers signing a four-year, $48 million contract. But in that contract, only, uh, what is it? I think not a ton of guaranteed money. I'm looking for the signing bonus was $12.5 million plus a couple, plus like a roster bonus in there. I don't have the total guaranteed money in front of me. I'm not seeing it readily available on my screen. But, but the, the point being like, same kind of structure, right? Two years, and then after that, they could get out of it for about $6 million in dead cap. Year one, $5 million. Year two, $11 million. So over the first two years of the contract, Jacobs and Swift are paying about the same amount of money. Like, it's about 16 for for uh, Josh Jacobs and 15 for J.J. Swift over the first two years. Like, about a million dollars difference there, $2 million difference with, with Saquon Barkley. A little bit more dead money after that if you were going to cut him. But, you know, you start to structure like, okay, how much better... And how how do you compare DeAndre Swift to Josh Jacobs as players? Like the one for me that's hardest is Tony Pollard because Tony Pollard is getting less overall than DeAndre Swift. They both saw, Tony Pollard got a three year twenty two million dollar contract from the Tennessee Titans. He'll get four million this year, eight and a half million the following year, and then only about two million dollars in dead money after that. Like they got a better deal on Tony Pollard than what the Bears got for DeAndre Swift. And okay, you can start to debate. Who's better, DeAndre Swift or or Tony Pollard? Like DeAndre Swift, I think had more rushing yards this past season um, and more yards per carry, but Tony Pollard had more receiving yards this year and more catches. But maybe Tony Pollard was better used in that Cowboys offense than what DeAndre Swift was used in the, that Philadelphia Eagles offense. But D, but Tony Pollard has two seasons of being a proven thousand yard rusher. DeAndre Swift has one season of doing it in Philadelphia. I guess Pollard's only done it in Dallas and maybe you take him out of Dallas and he's not as good. Like not to say that Tony Pollard is some crisp, clean running back that has no questions or no red flags. Like he's just proven elite, but like all three of those guys, Barkley, Jacobs and Pollard got franchise tagged and DeAndre Swift didn't, you know, DeAndre Swift was available and the Eagles said, eh, we'll, we'll let him go. And, and the bears certainly jumped right on that, but I just can't help but look around and say, okay, like Pollard came cheaper and, we could, I'm not here to say like definitively like Pollard is so much better than Swift or, or even that Swift is so much better than Pollard. Like I think those players are not terribly far apart in my brain. Like maybe you rate one higher than the other and we can, it, to me, it's not as important who you like better, but it's more important like whoever you like better, how far apart are they? And Pollard came for less money. And then guys like Josh Jacobs and Saquon Barkley got more money, but not astronomically more money and not astronomically more guaranteed money. And if they weren't that much more money, how much better do you think Josh Jacobs and Saquon Barkley are than DeAndre Swift? Like, again, we can kind of nitpick here. Like, I think Barkley is pretty clearly head and shoulders above all those other guys, and he got paid pretty clearly head and shoulders above those guys. But, like, you can have the Josh Jacobs-DeAndre Swift debate. I, I think, personally, I, I think Josh Jacobs is the better running back. How much better? We can start to have that conversation. But, like, he is the better running back and Packers are paying him one more million dollars over the next two years. And Saquon Barkley is getting two more million dollars over the next two years. than Deandre Swift, like that's where it becomes challenging for me, where it's like, that's not me advocating. Oh, the bears should have paid Barkley instead, or, Oh, the bears should have paid Josh Jacobs instead. I mean, you, we could, we could have that discussion, but like, it kind of feels like Swift set the market and then they, and then Jacobs and Barkley said, Oh, well, I, I mean, I guess we'll, We'll kind of base it around there. And, and if the Bears had waited, could they have gotten Swift for less? Or maybe Swift signs with somebody else for the same price. And we look at them and say, oh, they, they might have overpaid for DeAndre Swift. Like the Pollard one is the one that is just the hardest for me because I really don't think there's a huge gulf between Swift and Pollard. And Pollard got less and is structured more friendly and just in general, like feels like the better running back contract for a comparable player. You can, you can say, okay, Jacobs and Barkley are better players and they got a little bit more money and that's fine. And the bears didn't get particularly you know, out of position there compared to how those contracts are structured. I'm, I'm good there. It's the Pollard one that I'm having a little bit of trouble, like letting go of and, and being fully comfortable with. But again, 
we're going to give DeAndre Swift every chance to be everything the Bears wanted at running back and more. Like, he can be a dynamic receiver out of the backfield. He can be a dynamic runner, and he can be the perfect pair for Caleb Williams. Absolutely, we're going to give him every opportunity to do so. But on the front end, I want to make sure that that I properly express my skepticism. Let's let's go there. Like, I'm not mad about it. It didn't keep the Bears from signing any other players. It doesn't feel like it, at least. They still have cap space. Like, they still have room to sign players if they want to. I, I don't think that was a huge hindrance to them. And it's also nice that even if DeAndre Swift is terrible for some reason, you still got Herbert, you still got Roshan Johnson. Like, worst case scenario with DeAndre Swift, you'll still be okay in the backfield. Like, he is extra. You're not relying on DeAndre Swift and you have nothing else if something goes wrong with DeAndre Swift. Like, you'll be all right. If it's the worst signing Ryan Poles has ever made, you'll be in, you'll still be okay as a Bears offense, and that that's a good way to feel like, at the very least, like at peace with it. And best case scenario, he adds a bunch to your backfield and is what this Bears offense needed, is that dynamic threat out of the backfield for Caleb Williams and makes everybody's life easier and looks like a great signing for Brian Poles. Like, I can see both outcomes happening. I'm not here to say you should not like DeAndre Swift and this was a terrible signing by the Bears. No, but I still don't think it was the smartest. And I think talking to Louis kind of, reaffirm some of that to me when it's like, yeah, he wasn't always able to do a lot more than what the Eagles offensive line did. And he wasn't always as dynamic in the passing game as they could, they, they could have gotten from him. So like, let's see DeAndre Swift do more. I'm going to give him every opportunity to do so, but I'm going to be skeptical about it. And I'm going to be on the record in the, in the front end saying, not what I would have done, not the best use of the Bears salary cap space, but let's hope he's really fun to watch and has a great season. But I, I still think the likes of Herbert and, and Roshan Johnson can do a pretty darn good job of taking care of that for you as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what Louis said about DeAndre Swift, how you think DeAndre Swift fits in this Bears backfield, how you compare him to the other free agent running backs that signed this offseason. Let us know in the comments here in the Lockdown Bears YouTube channel, or you can tweet us at Lockdown Bears or post in the Lockdown Bears Facebook group. However you do it, just make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts, because that's going to be the best way to keep up with all of our daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. Come on back on Monday as we'll start turning our attention more and more to the NFL draft. We're going to go in-depth on Caleb Williams here in the coming days. We're going to go in-depth on the number nine pick, what the Bears' options are to move up, move down, stay there, and so much more. Great scouting reports, draft analysts, and more coming along the process. So hope you'll come on back for that. And you have to come back every day for your next opportunity to bear down.